Hello and welcome to BBC News School Report. I'm Imogen from Marbank. And I'm Sophie from Congleton High. We are broadcasting live from the BBC studios in the international news. Today it was from Moscow's Revolution Square. 50,000 riot officers arrested 90 of the 2,000 activists. They did this because they thought the ballot results were unfair, so they are calling for a new ballot. Also, the United States military planned a secret mission to, the, to try and snatch a crashed Sentinel drone in Kashmir, Afghanistan, after it was claimed to be shot down by two Iran airbase. The Chinese leadership has urged in the Navy to make it extended preparations for war, as it has been calculated warning shot directed at the US as the two countries talked defence yesterday. Albania's former intelligence chief is hiding in Britain, where he tries to dodge extradition to his homeland and faces torture and kidnapping charges. He was due to appear at Westminster Courts, but did not attend. And now over to Will and Faye, as they talk about how they met the football star, Phil Neville. Thank you. Thank you. The BBC do a two-week programme of sports activities called Celebrate Sports, and it's always a big event. Also, the main thing, we had a chat with Phil Neville, and he and he said he was there for the opening of Celebrate Sports, and he said that they've got a fantastic facility centre, and they've got one of the best television centres in Britain. Hi Phil, how do you feel about launching Celebrate Sports? Well, I think it's, uh, like I say, it's fantastic. I think it's a great opportunity, obviously, to, make, to, to meet the school children. It, it, it's not just uh, adults, it's school children, it's men, it's, it's women, it's girls, it's boys. And it, and it gives you the opportunity to uh, show off your skills as well. And, uh, you know, I've trained hard this morning, I've come here, I've, I've met some really nice children from a very polite school. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great start to the two weeks now building up for the BBC to uh, the Sports Personality of the Year. OK, thanks. Also, Will has a question. Uh, yeah, my greatest achievement uh, last Sunday in my career. Yeah. What was your favourite achievement in your career? Uh, I've had a lot of a lot of great achievements, but uh, my greatest achievement probably was was winning the uh, the treble for Manchester United. Uh, we won the the league, the FA Cup, and the European Cup all in the space of two weeks. And uh, you know, I think it's it's hard enough to win one of those trophies, but to win all three in, in a short space of time was was probably the pinnacle of my career. And and, and those medals I cherish probably the most. And now a report about the strike that took place last Wednesday on the 30th of November. How did you feel affected by the strike? Well, I actually wasn't affected by the strike personally. Um, I was still went into work on the Wednesday and did a full day's work as usual. So, and I don't have any children, so it didn't affect me in that way either. Why didn't you strike? I didn't strike because I'm not actually a member of a union, so I was obliged to strike um, and therefore I, I didn't. I, I went to work as usual. It was a very different working day because not everybody was there and there weren't any children in the school, um, but I got a lot of jobs done. What did you think about people who did strike? Um, I understand why people were striking. Um, personally, I probably wouldn't have if it was my choice, if I was a member of a union. Um, I think the pensions in the public sector are very favourable, um, certainly in comparison to those that are available to people in the private sector. Um, but I do understand why people were striking. Why do you think the strike happened? I think the strike happened because the government are wanting to make savings and changes and it's human nature to resist change. People don't like change. There is always a reaction to it. And so um, the unions wanted to make a statement and they wanted to fight their corner and make sure that they were looking after all their members. Thank you. OK. <laughs> How did the strike affect you? The school strike. Um, the strike affected me because uh, my daughter's school was closed, which meant that somebody had to look after her. But I've got a son and a daughter, so that their school was closed all day, and someone had to look after them at home, and someone that meant someone had to take a day off work to look after them. I couldn't take a day off that day, so my husband took the day off to look after them. How? Uh, where did the children go on the day of the strike? So they stayed at home. How many children do you have? I've got two children. They both stayed at home that day. What do you think about the strike overall? 
Um, I supported the strike because I understood that it was important to defend the teachers' um, future in terms of their pensions and how they would be looked after when they're older. What do you think your kids thought about the strike? I think my children thought it was a great day off. Thank you very much. Why was your school closed? Um, because of the strike action going on um, around the UK, some schools didn't close, so some people didn't have the day off. How did you feel about your school being shut? I was quite sad but happy at the same time because I could, if I had schoolwork, I could just get it done at my house in, instead of just going to school full of a classroom, not being able to concentrate. Would you have striked if you were a teacher and why? I might have, um, because um, of what's been going on. What did you do on the day of the strike? Um, I went around with my dad um, going shopping and then we came back and I had to do my homework. Why do you think the strike happened in the first place? Because of people protesting about not getting a pension and that's it really. Thank you very much. Thank you too. And now to the national headlines. A severe weather warning has been issued for the north of the UK. We're expecting snow and gales of up to 80 miles per hour. Police are tracking down burglars who are responsible for the death of a kitten by putting it in the microwave. The offence took place in New Nunnington on Saturday the 26th of November, but nothing was stolen. Now, a report on teenage stereotypes. How do you feel being stereotyped? I think it's unfair that uh, children my age are stereotyped because not everybody is the same and that we're not all bad like some people think we are. Have you ever been stereotyped? Um, I have once before. I wasn't sure what was quite going on but me and my friends were in a shop and my friends um, put some things that they picked up back in the wrong place and we got thrown out for it when I did nothing wrong. How do you think the media stereotypes teens? I think when it's on the news that there's teenage crime that um, it instantly puts a bad impression on kids my age and it's not fair. Um, we've heard that you work in a school, what's it like working with teenagers? It's uh, really exciting. I used to be a chef and that's a really boring job I think in comparison. It's much better working in a school, um, working with young people like you guys, getting involved in all different kinds of projects. It's, uh, it's a really exciting job to do. What sort of stereotypes are there in this, a school? Not as many as people think. Everyone assumes that teenagers are um, chavs, goths, emos, all those kind of things. And you get one or two people who try and, try and act like that. But quite often it's just all about an individual mix of loads of different people. And that's what makes it so uh, interesting to work with people like that. When I was a teenager, stere teenagers were stereotyped as being not particularly interested in education, as people who particularly wanted a job. And they weren't characterised as hoodies, as difficult people, which sometimes they are now. But they tended to be characterised as people who were youths and criminals and um, gathered together on street corners. What do you think of today's youth? What do I think of today's youth? I think they're really fortunate. I think they have access to the world. They have the world at their fingertips through the internet in a way that is unique. They're the first generation to be able to access any kind of information or idea immediately and to be able to express themselves to the world immediately. So they have a unique opportunity, the first generation, to be able to do this. Do you think working in the media influences your look on stereotypes? Working in the media might influence the way I feel about stereotypes or see stereotypes. I think I think I don't tend to see a stereotype because I'm fortunate to be able to meet people and I don't see them as groups. Does that make sense? Stereotyping has always been part of our society. But is it always fair? Uh, we're reporting for BBC School Report. Yeah. This is Sophie and Philippa. And now the school headlines. 
Over the UK, schools have been practicing their reporting skills. We contacted St. Ambrose Barlow and spoke to Mr. Shepherd, who told us his class was a mix of year seven, eight, and nine. They are doing a radio report and are using computers. Mr. Shepherd thinks that BBC School Report is a good way to get children involved in a group and to have a chance to be a journalist. Also, we spoke to Matima, who was 13. She said that it was fun and the stories she's working on are GCSE results, school, school council, Scotland, the planet and Man United knockout. Now to Katie. I'm here with students from Marlbank School and Congleton High who have spent today reporting on news that they think is important. So, Faye, what have you done today? Well, um, we went into a group of two, um, all of us, and we went in separate groups with different leaders and we sorted out different um, reasons uh, of news and we um, used them and ed edited and cropped them on camera and it was actually really fun. Thanks. Now to Will. How do you feel about what you've done today? I feel very proud of what I've done today and I'm glad that I've filmed everything at Phil Neville and meeting him is just like a one in a million chance and meeting such a nice guy. Finally, Philippa, how are you going to share your experiences back at school? I'm going to tell my friends what a great day I've had and I'm going to tell them to go onto the BBC School Report website so they can have a look at what we've done. Thank you and back to the studio. Thank you for watching BBC News School Report with Marbank School and Congleton High.